still in here. It's impossible, sir. Major Vignon is dead. Get these men out of the trenches! Come on! Let's get ready for another try! Get these men out of here! I tried three times with all the casualties. All right! Let's give it another try! So in the 46 years between 1953 and 1999, the late, great Stanley Kubrick directed only 13 full-length feature films, uh, many of those becoming the epitome of whichever genre he was working in at the time. I uh, think 2001 A Space Odyssey, uh, The Shining, Barry Lyndon, etc. And with only his fourth feature film and astonishingly still just 29 years old, he teamed up with Kurt Douglas to make what's possibly still the greatest World War I movie ever made, uh, 1957's Paths of Glory. Uh, now, this film dealt with themes so controversial for the time that French authorities considered it an offence to the honour of their army, and it was banned in France until 1975. Um, the film also carried such an anti-military message, apparently, that the Spanish banned it until as late as 1986. Let's take a look. So we're in 1916, which is pretty much literally the middle of World War One, um, and the conflict between Germany and France has settled into a bit of a stalemate. Uh, we have both sides here dug into trenches and unable to get that final meaningful breakthrough. Um, on the French side, Brigadier General Paul Miro, played by George McCready, is ordered to launch an attack on a heavily fortified German position known as the Ant Hill. My men, so naturally, men are going to have to be killed. Possibly a lot of them. They absorb bullets and shrapnel. And by doing so, make it possible for others to get through. What support will we have? I have none to give you. Now, this attack, we find, has little to no chance of success and will inevitably lead to huge casualties. However, with the possibility of a promotion dangled in front of him, Miro accepts and throws his 701st Infantry Regiment into a battle they simply can't win. And when you do, your men will be relieved and get a long rest. And this is where Colonel Dax comes in, played by Kirk Douglas. Uh, Dax is the commanding officer of the 701st and, despite deep personal misgivings, follows orders to launch the attack, uh, personally leading his men into battle. Now, it's no major spoiler to say that the French troops are gunned down in huge numbers, um, having barely left their own trench, with many forced to retreat and many others straight out refusing to join the attack once they realise it's a death sentence. Now, this mass slaughter isn't actually the most horrific thing that occurs in Paths of Glory. Uh, the true human horror is yet to come, but before we get there, let's have a peek at some outstanding work that Kubrick does in the battlefield sequences of this film. Um, now, very recently, Sam Mendes provided the technically astonishing 1917, which I'm a massive fan of with its almost single-take, grunt's-eye view of the Great War. Um, but as far back as the late 50s here, Kubrick was crafting exceptional long sequences tracking through French trenches. His work here really throws you into this seemingly infinite trench environment, um, endless walls of mud populated with scared soldiers and rats and other filth. Uh, the film's black and white photography again providing a, a real documentary look to everything on screen. And when Dax finally leads his troops out into no man's land to assault the anthill, uh, Kubrick gets a chance to unleash real chaos uh, with some outstanding camera work, predating Saving Private Ryan's beach landing by half a century. And similarly to Spielberg's war epic, we get no heroic music, um, just the cacophony of explosions and gunfire, the troops suffering beneath German machine guns um, and their own artillery shells while Dax's whistle tries to egg them on in some way. <laughs> And when the military brass realise that some men are refusing to leave their own trench, they uh, order that their own positions be shelled. Captain, do you fail to comprehend the meaning of my order? No, sir, but I respectfully ask the Captain, do you fail to comprehend the meaning of my order? No, sir. Then carry it out, Captain. Yes, sir. Now, the battle scenes here do really remain some of the greatest ever filmed, um, and it really highlights what an outrageous waste it was to send men walking into walls of bullets. Um, incidentally, the entire movie was filmed in Germany, um, even though it takes place along the Western Front in France. Now, seeing men who miraculously survive the battle uh, then be branded as cowards and failures leads to the most interesting and most awful aspects of the film kicking into gear. 
of Colonel Dax report to my headquarters. Yes, Major Kudak, assemble a general court martial. Have it ready to meet at three o'clock tomorrow afternoon. If those little sweethearts won't face German bullets, they'll face French ones. So now humiliated by defeat, uh, Moreau demands that three soldiers from the 701st be tried at court martial and executed by firing squad once they are inevitably found guilty of cowardice. Now, Corporal Paris, played by Ralph Meeker, Private Ferrell, played by Timothy Carey, and Private Arnaud, played by Joe Turkle, are the unfortunate soldiers chosen as scapegoats to basically represent the failure of the whole regiment. Now, Kirk Douglas's Dax decides to defend the actions of the troops and appoints himself defence counsel for the three terrified men. And thus, the film provides Kirk Douglas with one of his finest roles. Um, and he had a few. Um, as Colonel Dax, he finds the thin line between loyalty to his superiors and defending the honour of his troops. Douglas' frustration at the kind of pompous incompetence of his superiors, but also the senselessness of the war itself, really come to life. He is a bit theatrical uh, here and there, but never over the top. I apologise for not being entirely honest with you. I apologise for not revealing my true feelings. I apologise, sir, for not telling you sooner that you're a degenerate, sadistic old man. And you can go to hell before I apologise to you now or ever again! Uh, Mika, Carey and Turkle as the three soldiers picked to stand trial all do good work but the story's not really about them um, as in the film they're just pawns used in a bigger power play so Paths of Glory is an anti-war film almost more than any other claiming to be the same um, it's not really interested in France versus Germany uh, its horrors are in the poor decisions made at scale that affects hundreds even thousands of men um, of greed and personal validation over the safety of others and how trivially individual life is thought of in the scheme of a huge conflict. Well, you see, Colonel, troops are like children, just as a child wants his father to be... And I think we see that in quite a few different ways. I love seeing the difference between the, the dour muddiness of the trenches and the battlefield and the ornate offices of the military brass. Now, some of the film can be quite difficult to watch because it's quite a cynical and dark movie. Um, even the famous ending scene, which I won't spoil here, has an odd bit of sweetness to it and even after many watches I'm still not sure how I personally feel about it. Now Douglas and Kubrick make a great team here um, but it wasn't really to last. When Kirk Douglas and Anthony Mann later fell out early in filming Spartacus, Douglas brought in Kubrick to finish the film and then really proceeded to struggle beneath the director's perfectionism. Kubrick often hit headlines for the controversy of his films like A Clockwork Orange and Lolita but he never really hit as hard as this, 1957's Paths of Glory. Go check it out.